All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Kevin, and I'm here with, uh, by myself uh, today. Uh, Barbara's busy with uh, social media on Twitter as well, trying to broadcast this uh, to everyone online. Um, and we'd both like to welcome you all to our latest Novage webinar series episode. Uh, for this week's webinar, we're teaming with Geomatic consultant Jonathan Duguay to give you a first-hand look at GeoPlus Vision Civil for civil engineering and land surveying. Uh, Vision Civil resolves functionality, usability, and process-related issues by integrating land surveying, design, analysis, 3D model, and CAD standard management into your AutoCAD, Civil 3D, MicroStation, PowerDraft, and BricsCAD environment. Uh, Jonathan's presentation demos Vision Civil's three go-to modules, which are COGO, Vision, and Civil, for managing and analyzing any civil engineering project. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jonathan DeGuay is a Geomatic consultant at GeoPlus. Uh, he's been training end users and providing technical support for the last three years for GeoPlus solutions and other software while helping the development team with his expertise. Uh, he is a junior engineer of the OIQ that holds a Bachelor of Geomatics from Laval University since 2007. Uh, today's presentation is about 40 minutes long and afterwards uh, if we have any questions uh, we'll take some time to answer those there. Um, Submit yours to us at any time into the chat window below. But before we get going with today's presentation, here's an overview of what we do at NoVeg. Uh, the NoVeg webinar series is brought to you by NoVeg.com. As one of the largest online design software stores, we offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Uh, to learn more about GeoPlus Vision Civil, you are welcome to call and speak with our specialist, Bob, there. You can reach him by his email address, bob at NoVeg.com. And I want to strongly encourage everyone to visit our blog at blog.novich.com. Um, we got the latest news. We got the greatest interviews with some of the leading creatives out there, designers who are changing the way that you look and see the world around you. So if you want to meet the innovators, the makers, the architects, the visual effects artists, uh, you could um, definitely check out our blog at blog.novich.com. Um, so, and also, if you want to catch up with the latest product promos and Novich webinars, uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, it's another source of endless information and of course, entertainment. Coming up next week, uh, Vectorworks Spotlight 2014 is a tool of choice for scenic designers everywhere. Uh, it's award-winning designer Kevin Lee Allen explores step-by-step -step with Spotlight how to create scenes exactly as you envisioned. Uh, we'll be covering modeling techniques and texture creation with lit fog, along with instructions for achieving the right mood through use of light objects and Spotlight lighting devices. The presentation itself will be about one hour, and we're going to have a Q&A session afterwards as well. So if you want to sign up, ooh, what was that? If you want to sign up, head on over to www.novich.com slash webinar slash 112. And last but not least, I do want to mention that today's webinar is being recorded live once again. Uh, if you want to rewatch episode 111 in its entirety, as always, you can find uh, this webinar on our channel at Novich Webinar Series channel through Vimeo and YouTube. And with that said, Jonathan, are you ready? Hi, uh, hi, Kevin. Yeah, I'm ready, uh, actually. Uh, cool. Let I'm me, wait, to, uh, uh, I'm going to switch over to you right about now. That way you can show what people you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. All right, enjoy, guys. Take it away. Right, perfect. Okay, so uh, hi, everyone. I'm here with uh, Mary. She's our uh, uh, business, international business manager, and uh, she wanted to uh, make you a quick preview of uh, GeoPlus uh, just before we, uh, I present you Vision Civil, so I will let her talk a bit. Thank you, Jonathan. Good day, everyone. Welcome to our Vision Civil from Field to Finish webinar. I'd like to start off by giving you an introduction on our company. GeoPlus was founded in 1987, and we're proud to say that 27 years later, we've sold over 40,000 licenses in North America, Latin America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. We consider ourselves innovators in the GIS technology and have acquired the knowledge over the years to develop products and services designed specifically for the land management and their needs. We consider ourselves a one-stop shop providing organizations with fully integrated solutions from land to finish of all survey group infrastructure design. Now, in the Vision Suite includes a software called Vision Terrain, which is a fully integrated software solution allowing all field works and stakeout projects on the same tool with all measuring devices such as Leica, Trimble, Sokia, Topcon, 
CHC, Genet, and others. The Vision Doc software is an easy to use GIS LIS solution for people in any industry who want to organize, manage, archive, search, retrieve, and view georeferenced documents. And finally, our GeoPlus's Vision Civil is a complete land surveying and civil engineering software solution of calculation and design for any engineering project. This software constitutes a complete design solution allowing all professionals in the industry to quickly visualize terrain dif from different angles, triangulation mode, producing profiles, cross-section plans, caping, pipe services, and also to make rapid and accurate volume calculations. Now within the Vision Civil software, uh, we have some top features and I'd like to quickly mention them and Jonathan will go over them in detail as we go on with the webinar. The first one is Universal Field Data Integration Land XML Exchange Format. Automated creation of surfaces with break lines. Number three is Powerful Connectivity Manager. LiDAR Processing Points Cloud. Terrestrial LiDAR for center line road detection, align, alignment and template, volume calculation by four methods, and drill core surface creation. And now Jonathan will take over the technical aspect of our webinar. Yeah, yeah. Well, hi everyone. Uh, as Marie told you, uh, I'm about here to uh, present to you Vision Civil. Uh, I decided to, uh, to show it to you on AutoCAD since uh, most of you might uh, already know that uh, software quite well. But as Kevin said earlier, uh, Vision Civil can be installed with uh, BricsCAD, uh, Bentley's, MicroStation or PowerDraft uh, without any problems. So uh, actually what it does when you open uh, GeoPlus in AutoCAD is that you have some uh, new modules, uh, new menus that appears. And uh, as uh, Kevin said, there are three different modules in Vision Civil. A uh, Kogo module, which is uh, the mathematical part of uh, the land surveyor's uh, tools. So uh, everything that uh, needs to be calculated can be calculated vision, uh, with Vision Kogo, with the Kogo uh, module, sorry. And, uh, the the, the vision uh, module is the link between the COGO and uh, the, the, the AutoCAD itself, <coughs> the, the, the CAD itself. Uh, and while civil, uh, the, the civil module is where the surfaces, profile sections, uh, volume calculations are being done. It's, it's separated from AutoCAD because uh, you don't want to uh, over-process AutoCAD. Uh, with uh, every calculation done uh, with your surface. So I've uh, decided to show you uh, mainly uh, four different projects, if I could say. Uh, firstly, I want to, uh, to make a project from uh, the field uh, that you could have taken with a total station, bring that uh, to a surface. And to the into the drawing. Uh, second part will be uh, with the LiDAR. Uh, LiDAR processing tools that we've got. Uh, third will be the surface managing and uh, the fourth part will be more of a solid man management. So the first part, as I said, uh, with the uh, to import field data, actually I'll just open a new drawing so you know that I'm starting from scratch. And I'll take an English model over here. Usually when you install it firstly in English, it will be done. I'm sorry about Windows. It's, I'm in Quebec here, so my, my Windows is in French. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and so I've opened a drawing with uh, Vision Plus, a new drawing uh, with the Vision Plus menu. And it asked me for a model, of course, but it also asked me for a descriptive file because uh, actually Vision Civil works with a database outside the drawing that keeps every point, parcels, chains, uh, alignments, surfaces outside the CAD so it can be drawn within this particular design but could also be used in another project. 
Uh, so I'll create a new one with, again, an English model, like that. And I'll go, uh, I'll go open Vision Kogo because right now I don't have any points in my descriptive file. So, okay, sorry. So, uh, Vision Kogo over here, uh, as I said, contains all the tools for geometry adjustments, point management uh, of the, the descriptive file itself but also uh, the links to convert uh, that data into points from other sources into uh, that particular uh, MDB. So uh, what I'll do now is transfer the uh, an ASCII file into MDB, such as a uh, geodetic point in that case, or it could be GPS files also that uh, sometimes are saved in ASCII files. Uh, so I'll just... Oh, take me where it was supposed to. Uh, so I'll take the ASCII file as you see over here and number uh, and I'll I'll choose the type file in the YXZ as the common way over here but you see that you have also other types that can be done. And from that there's a small preview of the file since I only have four points in that file, the preview is pretty much the old file, but when you have uh, hundreds of points, it's just a small preview to, to let you know what you're currently doing. So I'll validate that. There's no error in that file, so I can save my points. <coughs> and while the points are saved in the database, they are also saved in the design. So if I zoom and extend, I already have my points in my drawing. The points, the p-code associated with that point and the symbol uh, associated within my standards because you can plan your own standards in Vision Civil. So I have my four control points that came from geodetic points and now what I want to do is actually let's say we had uh, we had a survey over a small uh, a small intersection and we want to make a model with that. So what I'll do is I'll take my uh, double station file. Uh, it can import GDT file and many more type of files over here. You know, this one is in GDT. So let's call my group name simple. And let's take my file as the raw file simple over here. So when I import that, it comes to the Calculate Fill Book automatically. And what this is going to do is that you want to transfer your observation, which are angles and distance, uh, to coordinates. Uh, this file is uh, uh, tra traverses a series of traverses. So I'll validate those traverses. It's telling me that one of the angle ain't right, do I want to calculate it? So no for that. And if I want to visualize, this is how the survey was done, stations stations to stations. So I, I could, if I want, adjust that polygon, uh, either by a compass transit or mean square, but uh, roughly now I just want to calculate the side shots. I won't bother with the adjustment for this uh, presentation here. So, and it's telling me that there's a p-code that isn't shown. And here it's telling me, well, since you didn't adjust anything, you've taken, uh, <coughs> you've taken more than once, uh, one time uh, this point number over here. So what you want to do with it? So let's say I want to take them all and take a median point. And I don't want to change that coordinate, neither do I want to change these as well. These are because I've already taken them and I didn't adjust anything. So I calculated the slide the shot. I saved them into my database. And because I've saved them, they're already appearing in my drawing.
they're appearing in the, the scale, in, in a particular scale, and if that scale isn't good enough, it's quite big actually for that project, it's quite easy to change in the parameters. So let's say I don't want to print them in 1,000, uh, one, uh, but let's say in 500. I can, afterward, erase all the points and redraw them. And why uh, why we don't do it automatically is because, uh, well, sometimes over here you have a, a drawing that will be printed in uh, several different scales, so you might not want every point to be uh, at the same scale. So that's why we don't automatically put the points in a particular scale. So every point has been put uh, to a 500 scale, the points, the symbol associated with them, all that. <coughs> and, of course, I don't know if you saw that, but when uh, I've calculated all the results appear in Vision Kogo, and the last column is the P code with some change code or string codes, depending on where you are. When you are, the terms might differ uh, a bit. Uh, chains and strings are mostly the same thing. What it, what it is is that you want to connect dots in the field and afterward, uh, when you want to uh, put them in your drawing, they'll, design, they'll be in the design automatically. So we can read those codes over here, those particular chain codes, and we have a chain manager in the drawing which allows you to, well, draw them in the CAD. But and when I draw them, they tell, it's telling me, well, there are some chains that you have that are that only have one point, so you might want to check them out, or there's one that the definition is strange, so you, you want to check that out. Else, the chain manager is quite a powerful tool. Uh, you can even uh, reverse automatically a, uh, a string that you have. Uh, you can identify one that you've drawn, so it's quite easy to uh, go and change that. You could just reverse its, uh, its drawing like that, or you could even reverse its definition if you want the old order to be uh, upside down. You could also, of course, change the order of the points. Well, there are many things that you can do with the chain manager. It's, it's a manager. <laughs> so, uh, and also another tool that's quite interesting is that uh, it can detect crossing between uh, those chains, allowing you to see where exactly is the crossing. Like you see over here, there's a crossing between two chains and a crossing that ain't uh, that has a different in elevation over here of 12 centimeters. <coughs> okay, sorry, I was distracted by the chat window. Uh, <coughs> So you have the elevation here, and you could say, well, I want to uh, uh, transfer the point, uh, that, that point over here, I want to uh, put it uh, a bit uh, higher or something, or uh, for now, I'll just do nothing with it, because I want that to uh, go on the surface, and I'll show you what the surface manager can do with that. I'm sorry, I just noticed that the panel over here might be uh, in the way for you. Oh, that's better. <coughs> so we have string, we have point. Uh, notice that the strings already are at the same scale as the points. So the the, light, uh, the line scale is automatically uh, <coughs> automatically settled, as well as the line type uh, with the p codes. So that's all. These are all uh, settings that can be done. Uh, standards that can be done in your parameters over here, so you can have in an office the same rule for every p code. <coughs> p code, sorry, that means strangely. Uh, <laughs> so now I have chains, I have points, but I don't, still don't have a surface. Well, it's as easy as bring utilities and export DTM, and I want to export them in a DTM tab table over here. I could export them to in world also. Let's say sample over here and export that. It's telling me the same thing as before for the, the, the strings that has only one point. And if I open Vision Civil, I have ta -da, my sample over here. 
which is a surface that has only one layer, every point that were transferred, and every break lines, which are, of course, every strings in my design over here. So the surface is already done. All I want need to do is triangulate it. I could make an outline directly from it. Oh, sorry. Quick uh, mistake over here. I triangulate it, but you remember that I had a crossing. And while triangulating uh, cross, uh, break lines that are crossing not at, good, at the same elevation could be quite problematic. That's why we have a validate duplicate over here, which, because some, cha some chains uh, go over the same uh, <coughs> over the same points, there are some duplicates that automatically get rid of. And the crossing over here, what it allows me to do is to make an average point uh, between the two over here. So it would take the middle points of those strings over here and put a point inside it. That's what I'll do for now, and afterward, triangulating that will be quite easier. So I'll just change my color of triangulation. And when well, you saw me triangulate, now I want to make a preview of that. And notice that we have a preview outside AutoCAD. And this is quite uh, simple reasons that because when you have a surface with uh, thousands of points, uh, that might be uh, very hard to uh, visualize in AutoCAD fastly. So uh, it's easier to be done with our, uh, our viewer over here, which is much faster, as you can see, to see many points and many triangles. Well, you might not have seen that yet, but when I come to LiDAR files, you'll see that more accuracy. So uh, I have my surface. I could uh, show the triangles in my CAD if I want, but uh, what I'll do instead is create some contours of that file. So I'll just click Contour, make an update to select the minimum and maximal altitude automatically. And since I want to have some intervals that are that uh, that are at uh, straight numbers. Let's say I'll have a one meter interval for my primary and my secondary at that 25. And I can also make some annotations. At, let's say every 50 meters, and draw that to the CAD. And as you'll see, everything has been drawn over right here. And if you say, well, that's not quite what I wanted, well, it's as easy as changing that over here. I won't make any annotation. Erase that. Redraw that. Ta-da. So it's quite easy, quite sim simple, and fast to change your contours. Uh, now, I could go on and on with that surface, but uh, I want to show you some other files that are more, that talks a bit more than just uh, an intersection. Uh, what I might just want to show you beforehand is that uh, we have every point over here, but maybe you just wanted to add symbols, so it's quite easy actually to, uh, to manage your point with the uh, <coughs> drawing points. I'll do that easier. Drawing points, drawing arrays, and select what you want to keep. Uh, sorry, I want to erase that and not assemble. So you see that only the symbols are kept. Everything that is drawn with uh, Vision Civil, with the managers of Vision Civil, uh, are recognized, recognized by Vision Civil, so it's quite easy to erase and draw those items particularly. So we don't need to check and go to see the layers and all that. All the manager have the right tools for that. <coughs> so we have a sample that I had over here. So I'll erase that. Actually, I want to start over. And now we'll go with the <coughs> LiDAR files. 
LiDAR files just uh, the LiDAR files are quite huge files uh, that my, uh, some of you might uh, use regularly, uh, others might uh, don't know exactly what it is. Uh, so briefly, it's uh, a, a laser that's on an airborne, in that case, that pay, takes many points and you can create surface. But such many points that uh, taking them all into AutoCAD might be quite painful. And that's why we have that tools. And the, the, most of the CADs sometimes have tools for that, but uh, I'll just make you a small presentation of what they do usually. It's called a densification, and what does that, that mean is that it takes, well, let's say one, one point uh, over five or uh, over ten points. So just uh, we simplify, we, we densify by uh, to ten percent of the points. We have just fewer points. Here, let's say we take one point every five points. It comes to that, and when you triangulate, well, you have something like this that comes out, and that's what most ca uh, most CADs use as a tool to uh, to uh, <coughs> to use the lidar. But what we use is a simplified a simplification, which uh, take over the, the the points that you want to keep exactly. So let's say we keep these points over here with the simplification tool. It will generate a model that with, that is much more realistic to uh, what the field looks like exactly. So if I uh, if I check, I, I've checked a, a surface of two uh, two million points. I made a densification to uh, ten percent of that, and that's roughly the surface I had and the surface with all the points. And when I do a simplification, that's what it does exactly. So the difference between both surface is quite more, uh, quite uh, less significant. <coughs> so back to LiDAR over here. So let's say I'll use uh, a LAS file. A LAS file. We can, uh, with our tool, use LAS, LAS, or uh, ASCII files. So I'll take a LAS file here and open it. And as you'll see, we have a bounding box to select the points we want from that file. Uh, we also have classification because, as you know, LIAR files have more than one class already. So we might just want some points over the ground. Usually that's what you want. And then you can <coughs> simplify by grid and simplify by triangulation. Those are two different ways that we use. I won't take much time to explain them to you, but roughly I'll just set some parameters and add the point to the surface. So notice that if I wanted, I could have just densify as most of the CAD software use, but what I want you to see is a more powerful way here to simplify points. I add them to a surface. It will automatically generate me a surface over here. <coughs> so it's calculating right now the quad trees over here, which are, if it doesn't take the these tolerance, it will, uh, well, we'll see. So <laughs> uh, as a preview, I had the file before. I think I didn't even show you the file. I'll show you what the file looks like exactly. So these are all the points in the file. Now this is the intensity that we're seeing. You might want to see with the elevation also. It will be a bit uh, more talkative. So that's the old point cloud over here. And notice that the elevation has been colored and we still keep the uh, intensity so we have a good a good way to see the file. So these are 2, 000, uh, 2 million points and as you see it's quite easy to move the model with 2 million points which in AutoCAD would be very painful. So uh, I had points in my surface so every points are over here and if I triangulate that make an outline 
these are what it came it came out of. So basically, we have less than 10 percent of the point, and still have so I have 63 million points instead of 2,000. But uh, instead of uh, 62,000, instead of 2 million. Sorry. So <coughs> it comes out as very defined where it needs to be. So the, the, the hills like that are very defined at their contours, but uh, when it's flat iron, it's much more uh, spaced out. So you only keep the points you want. And these I could try, I could put them in the cab, but let's uh, just take an outline because I just want you to see something else. So that that's the outline I have. Another powerful tool that we have is that, well, you have a LiDAR with 2 million points, but you don't want to have all of them. You might just want a little sector like this. Well, we can create a new surface. In the outline, pick that line. And when you come to the LiDAR and select that surface, if you transfer point into this particular uh, this particular surface, it will tell you that well it can already contain points because the outline yes I want to keep them and it will only keep the points inside that I've simplified so only 64, uh, 648 points which comes roughly as something like that. And if I triangulate that, it's my outline. Yeah, and my outline is currently at zero because of my uh, the, the, the polar line I've picked. So I'll just change my elevation to undefined. And when I'll triangulate, it will automatically give me an elevation more realistic. So that's basically parts of my LiDAR file. <coughs> so that's about uh, simplification. I also wanted to show you about uh, vectorization that we have. So let's take this file over here, the last file that well, mostly shows building. You might have seen a file like this on the net before. It's an open model. And what I'll do with it is I'll simplify by triangulation and extract line from it. And when I do that, higher points. So let's see, five and zero point five, and that should be good. So when I do that and I create a new surface from it, it will, well, densify as you see, simplify as you see 200,000, 70,000 points, and it will extract great lines automatically at a good elevation, so the, uh, the top and bottom of the the, the buildings can be and it can be drawn as such and already transferred in my new surface as break line as I said so every break line taken will be there so that's a part of vectorization and we're currently also working to uh, to extract building lines uh, so that that's that's uh, currently uh, been working out over here we have many developments that's coming up in uh, this kind of file. We also have a LiDAR terrestrial, which uh, <coughs> well, LiDAR terrestrial, which is uh, more specific, it's, uh, it's a LiDAR mounted on a truck uh, that uh, scan roads and such, and uh, so that we can extract the center line from uh, the, 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 the painted lines in the road. So if I take a road LiDAR file as we here. The column ain't right, so I'll just check the good columns for 
my CSV file and open it. <coughs> it will take the scan angle, scan distance, and the scan intensity and analyze that to detect lines. So if I preview, you see that the lines appears in the, the model over here. So that's a bit close. Uh, and we can extract line from that. And as you see, the painted lines joins together to get some lines over here. And by doing that, it fills the detected line table over here. And if I select one, it appears in green. And I can fit that line. So because it's composed of uh, uh, 2,000 points, I want to fit that to compose 11 segment in horizontal, uh, horizontal curve and for the vertical curve, 12 segments. That will create me a new alignment. As such, if I check, I have my new alignment over here, which is composed of every, every points that were taken inside my LiDAR file, but my horizontal alignment is composed of 11 segments and vertical curve here. And that, I can also use some fitting tools to simplify my horizontal curve. So let's say I'll take uh, 50 meters as minimum segment length, 0.44 as the maximum distance, radius, uh, the rest is good enough. I won't make a global, global fit to the already and I'll change that to under under iteration. And while I'm doing that, we'll have some information about the process and see that the line has changed to put myself some arcs between the segments uh, to make it as uh, as fluid as possible. I can even <coughs> check within the viewer what the file looks like. So the yellow line is the extra is the extracted alignment, while the red dots are the uh, lidar points in the file. <coughs> so I have that for the horizontal curve, but I also have that for the vertical curve. If I do a best fit, I have parallels joining every line over here. So if I check that as a profile, you'll see that. It's quite, it looks quite well uh, on my surface, between both the surface and the, the, the desired alignment. <coughs> so that's a project that has been done with the ministry, uh, transport ministry over here. Uh, and uh, that's part of our, uh, all, uh, <coughs> the, of our, uh, sorry, <laughs> I missed my word, but our developments, uh, constant developments over here. So uh, we have surfaces. I've shown you LiDAR, uh, terrestrial, LiDAR aerial. So uh, what I'll do now is I'll open a new file because uh, I want to do some, uh, some uh, surface management and I want to have a file that talks a bit more. So let's open a query file, a qu query, uh, an open pit file. <coughs> Uh, I guess I want to. Okay, and I'll open. Uh, my PC right here. So excavation file. Want to change the other. So that's uh, an open pit. That's point of an open pit over here, and. <coughs> If I start my uh, vision cell over here, you see that I have no surfaces, and I'll create a new one. And when I create my surface, uh, if I check the point tab, is, uh, it's empty, and we have uh, some uh, some tools as you've seen before. I've uh, I've uh, filled the, the the point tab with Kogo points, uh, with lidar, and uh, we can also, if I uh, right click import points from an ASCII file, but what I'll do now is just pick point from the drawing. These are 3D points, and if I select them, I can generate my surface from them. Uh, also, if I have some break lines in my drawing, 
I can use them uh, such as easily as picking the line here, here, and here. And well, it's telling me that one line, that line here ain't good. Probably took it the uh, wrong point somewhere. So I have every point here and if I triangulate that, I can make my outline automatically. And if I check that up, that's my quarry that I have over here, my open pit. Now notice I've made an outline uh, automatically and I have long triangles. Well, it's quite easy to get rid of uh, the long triangles. I just may need to make my maximum edge, redo my outline, retriangulate, and if I check it back, I have an outline that is quite more uh, realistic. Well, that fits more the, the surface than uh, the other one. So I have my drawing over here, and that my, my surface over here. I'll just switch so everyone will see like that. I can create some contours, as you've seen before. So let's say from 525 every 10 meters, every 2 meters. I can draw them in the CAD automatically. So you see as such. <clears throat> and uh, now what I'll show you is uh, that that's fun, but I want to uh, calculate my volumes. And there's there are four ways in uh, Vision Civil to calculate volumes. Uh, so, well, you have the standard volumes between uh, Z level and my surface or even from surface to surface. So, <coughs> sorry. So if you have the, the surface that was before the excavation, uh, for now I don't, but what I'll do is that I'll draw my outline, I'll erase my contours. Uh, I've drawn my outline in the CAD. It's a 3D polyline, so if I create a new surface here, go on my outline tab and pick a line. It can generate my outline automatically and I can just triangulate that. So what I'll have basically is the outline triangulated. So I'll take that as a uh, top surface and when I'll calculate my volume, so I'll save that, save that. I calculate my volume, I'll take an existing surface and I'll even save my resulting surface so you'll see what it does. I'll calculate and mainly what it does is it will do polygons uh, from the top to the bottom surface and calculate the volume of these polygons. So I could have even made a differential contour so if you're comparing a LiDAR file with a uh, typical survey file, you might uh, see uh, where the, the files uh, are not similar enough and where an uh, uh, investigation might be needed in your LiDAR file, let's say. So I have the report of uh, my volume calculation. So, oh, I calculated from surface 1 to surface 1, which is a bit uh, strange. Oh erase the surface that I've created. I'm sorry about that. Uh, what I wanted to do is from surface 1 to surface 2, which is more something of a concern. So <clears throat> basically it's calculating one another over here. And it will densify each surface. So I have a fill and excavation, a fill, the majorly fill because my bottom was the reference and my bottom was the, the was I interrogated and my reference was a top, I should have 
converted that maybe to have the excavation uh, process. I would have done it the volume with the surface two over here. And mainly it took the surface two and as you'll see, it densified it as a plate with every point. So it made polygons between each surface. <coughs> These are, well, relatively simple and standard uh, volumes. Uh, we also have a section uh, that we can do. So if I let's, if I uh, create my uh, an alignment, let's say from there to there, and I pick that to do an alignment, add a new alignment, and pick a polyline. That. I can create sections from there and uh, let's say I want surface 1 to the surface integrated and surface 2 as a reference and I want to calculate my volume from 1 to 2. Like that. And I can see, well, I'll put, uh, let's say, an offset of 100 meter each side, an interval of, well, I didn't save my alignment. So let's say an interval of 20 meters just to make it a bit quicker. And if I view them, uh, the error says that um, my road ain't uh, have no speed on it, and it's basically because I did the basic alignment. Oh, sorry about that. <coughs> so I have the volume, the, the sections over here, and I can see my volumes uh, of the excavation done over here. I can even have the reports of every section or even the reports of the whole operation as a table over here. Uh, it, it can also, if I have more than one uh, layer of my surface, I could have interrogated each layers uh, so I would know uh, what type of soil uh, has been uh, excavated and, uh, and such because uh, as you might have seen, we, have, we might have more than one layer on uh, on one surface. We also have a layer uh, by, some, by uh, drill core surfaces uh, that can be done. <coughs> so, uh, but I won't go in that uh, today. It would be too long for the demo. So basically, uh, sections, I'll take a bit faster. Uh, I've used the report and what I can do also is I've created two surfaces uh, with my volumes. I'll join them together, so I'll merge my surfaces, I'll take every point, and what I want to do with that is make a solid, because, uh, so I have here, move it as a solid. Uh, what I want to do is make a solid, because what I would want to do is make a mesh from that an external mesh of the, the, the old solid, and uh, as you'll see over here, it, it makes a global uh, solid of my work and I can make a tetraidization of, of it. So what it makes is uh, triangular pyramids inside that joins every triangle and with that <coughs> it's giving me 133,000 tetraid. So uh, I can make a volume with that. And that's uh, mainly to, co to compose with complex, uh, complex volumes because uh, when you have uh, an overhang in your careers uh, or uh, with a dynamite hole, uh, it's, it's likely that you won't have flat, uh, flat walls uh, and sometimes you have uh, an uh, overhang and well, <coughs> When you have overhang, the standard volumes calculation can't uh, be as precise, and uh, we can uh, thus with tetraization we can go with something much more complex. As uh, if I import data from a project, let's say uh, my hand over here, 
and I'll just take my hand and that's also another way to exchange data from project to project. So I have a hand over here which as you see has 39,000 points. I can mesh that into one big mesh and tetrarization to calculate the volumes and well we have a volume of right here is a big hand and as you probably noticed well if you do standard volumes over that kind of surface you'd have a heck of a headache. So I'd say, well, let us give you a hand with our projects and uh, with your projects with uh, Vision Civil, which is a software quite easy, quite efficient, and quite uh, fast, uh, fast learn, to learn and to use. So, uh, well, I hope I didn't uh, stand too long for my demo. Kevin, are you still there? Yes, Jonathan. Um, no, I, I didn't think you uh, you take too long as well, but I didn't know that you could also do a graphical preview of a hand. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay, so I have a couple questions uh, before we uh, wrap up the presentation. Um, Peter okay. wants to know: uh, Can the software? Uh, I'm assuming he's talking about Vision Civil, be installed standalone, or must it have some um, you know complementary? Uh, well, actually, uh, that's a that's a pretty good question. Uh, we've just managed uh, with uh, the recent release to have uh, the vision part, the civil part, so mainly that window over here with the functions to calculate volumes and uh, create uh, sections and uh, profiles and calculate uh, LiDAR, uh, all that. Uh, this, so this part of the software can be, used, it can be installed uh, independently from any CAD. So that's a new release from, uh, well, it will be uh, the new release in uh, the, the 30 uh, April 30, if, I'm, if I don't mistaken. April, on the on the 30th so, of uh, April. Cool. The next release will have a standalone version of Vision Civil. Sounds good. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is going to be our last question for the day. Uh, can the software work with point clouds generated from aerial photographs, like that, that are basically not lidar? Uh, well, actually, uh, if you have uh, a photo that has been, uh, if you have a photo uh, itself, we can take we can't take the photo. But if you manage to transfer that photo into a point cloud, an ASCII point cloud, or something like that, we could use uh, the ASCII. All you need to do uh, to uh, if if I want to take let's say a CSV file, it won't work because this one ain't good, but uh, all you need to do is have a, a nasty file with uh, mix, y, z, the column, uh, and preferably an intensity if you want to preview with the intensity, but all you need basically is a x, y, z. Uh, because we have, well, grayscale uh, photo, you could add the intensity with the grayscale photo. But you you need to do an ASCII file of that photo, which uh, there are some tools, uh, some easy tools to do that actually. All right, that does pretty that, much uh, does that answer the question. I Peter um, Peter from Nairobi. I hope that uh, answers your question right there. Um, once again, if you guys have any, um, because we're approaching uh, the end of our presentation, if you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to email to me at Kevin at NoVeg. Um, I will forward them to Jonathan, and hopefully we can answer those questions uh, outside of the webinar. Uh, that will give us plenty of time to do so. <laughs> All right. Uh, in this case, Jonathan, I'll take over from here. Uh, I okay. will tick the mic. <laughs> cool. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Um, Jonathan, can you see that? Yeah, yeah. I awesome. I can see that pretty well. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, we're very happy. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending this presentation. Jonathan, Marie, uh, thank you for uh, being here and answering questions and demoing basically uh, Vision Civil, GeoPlus Vision Civil uh, for our uh, attendees out there who are into 
civil engineering and also land surveying. Uh, if you guys are looking up to pick up uh, the latest version of Vision Civil, um, I know that, uh, well, Jonathan, you just mentioned that a release is coming out on the 30th of April. Uh, we will probably carry that release as well. So if you guys are looking to pick up uh, Vision Civil, uh, it is available worldwide from us uh, as a digital delivery from Novedge. Uh, with zero sales tax. So if you guys want to check it out, contact our sales specialist, Bob Thayer. Uh, his email address is bob at novich.com. And I do want to mention, if you guys have any other questions, um, there is, it, right away, you can see contact information. Um, head on over to geo-plus.com. Um, um, there's a bunch of resources available, and uh, they also have a frequently asked question page. So uh, yeah, hopefully that will do that for you guys. Um, oh yeah, but uh, Jonathan, is there anything else that you guys want to mention for geoplus.com or? Uh, well, basically, I think I, I've managed to do the whole uh, the whole presentation. Uh, I think Marie said enough for geoplus, and uh, well, just I just hope we can uh, we can enjoy uh, get, having you with uh, with us for a long time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, Very happy to have this part. Basically, uh, Cool. Um, but yeah, I do want to mention we're going to be sharing links on our blog at blog.novich.com. Uh, it's an awesome way to uh, read interviews. We've got a bunch of interviews. We've got a special release blog every Monday of the week. So if you guys are looking for deals, uh, yeah, that will be a good place to check it out. And also on Facebook, um, where we'll be sharing the link for today's webinar after it's uploaded and done on YouTube and Bitmeal. So uh, coming up next week, we have a webinar with... Um, Kevin Lee Allen, an Emmy Award winning visual and lighting scenic and lighting designer. Uh, it's going to be about Vectorworks Spotlight. So if you guys want to check that out, head on over to novich.com slash webinar slash 112. If you have, this thing keeps popping up. Gosh. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any questions uh, about today's webinar, uh, about our future lineup, email me at kevin at novich.com. And uh, yes, so today's recording will be on Vimeo and YouTube. So stay tuned. Um, it should be up by the end of the day. And on, on behalf of the Novetch team, I want to say um, thank you. Uh, in French, uh, merci. <laughs> merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, yeah. So uh, thank you, everyone. Um, let us know what you think about today's webinar. Jonathan, have a good one. Attendees, yeah, have too. a good one. All Thanks, right. everyone. Thanks for watching. All right. Have a good one. Cheers.